Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Payne. Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Crypto. We've got Nerd Love TV joining us. You've been Hi. on quite a few other episodes. Thanks for coming of by. Of course, again. yes, one of the founding fathers of Coffee and Crypto. Right, <laughs> we were on the very first episode. That's true, actually. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I wanted you to come on here and talk a bit about meme coins because that's been obviously really popular in the news right now. And Pretty much the only thing in the crypto news I've been seeing, or at least on my timeline, like it's the only thing the buzz that's been around. Well, it's interesting. Besides AI. Because, yeah, yeah. It's That's just a too. constant conversation, yes. obviously. Um, you know, before, when we would see meme coins running, it would usually be an indication of, you know, the bull run already going on. Bitcoin, Ethereum, the altcoins, all of them would start to run, and then we'd subsequently see meme coins kind of coming after that. This is the first time in the industry that I'm aware of that we're seeing it reversed. Oh, 100%. it's the meme coins that are getting all the attention and it's kind of it's been really exciting for a lot of people because there's been people who made a lot of money during this kind of and even even people are arguing it's still not necessarily a bad time to get into some of them. So I'm kind of no. curious what got you interested specifically in Pepe because I know you got involved in that. Yes, I did. I was and fortunate the enough. Going down. Yeah, uh, really, so many uh, because it's it's led me down to. So meme coins in general, I've never really had much experience with that, and um, I like my entry point was GameFi and 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 uh, play to earn games during the twenty twenty one bull bull run. So all I know is gaming NFTs, mm -hmm. roadmaps, utility, these kinds of terminology, right? Um, this is much more on the you know the the knowledge that you want to have here is really that of like traders and and uh, and learning like how to time markets and these kinds of things. So I think what's really cool about this is that like. At least for me, was I was able to liquidate something I won on Twitter and uh, sell it to a very good friend, and so it's not even out of my hands to even see where that goes, and create some capital that I could just chunk into here that way. And so this was a great experiment for me as a person who's never done anything high risk okay. to be able to have a low entry point thing that uh, that just is a high risk thing that you can monitor, and just so I could really learn how to, how do these things work? What's the ecology okay. of all this? And even then the one I picked here, it's followed like nothing else. There's nothing to really compare it to in terms of its speed. So I don't know. It's changed. Uh, the, the, the Twitter spaces are alive with it and I can't stop listening because there's just so much going on. That's beyond meme coins themselves. It's actually a mm -hmm. whole, it's creating a whole conversation about all of crypto culture. Okay. Really? Now it's interesting that you mentioned high risk because I would even argue that play to earn is higher risk than some of these meme coins. Agreed. Right? But there's utility, there's promises, there's so that kind of gives almost this sense of security, whereas meme coins, it's like, yeah, no, some of them they they say they're doing nothing. It's like completely not even a financial instrument, it's just a thing, you know. So I, that's when I would say, okay, then that's potentially more high risk. But it's really funny because it's just if we as humans assign value to something, it's it becomes valuable. Yes, and the and more people that want it, the more valuable it gets. And I think meme coins really show how that's possible, that there doesn't need to be utility. There doesn't need to be, if people just all agree, hey, this is a good investment because of culture, because of social media. because That's of what, what it is. I, I feel like more of the, than a store of value, it's also a storage of culture. I think that's what attracts okay. the storage of value is that like, you're right. There's really, there's no roadmaps or utility or usually a team even. So like, what you're usually hedging on is just the brandability of that vibe and that culture, right? And that's where, like, we all love the Doge, we all love the SHIB because of that, because they have this cheeky but cute, like, connotation to them, just like how when you, you know, like, brands like Nike or whatever, they have different focuses that are their yes. words, their power words. And when you look at one, for example, like Pepe, like, that is, like, just think of the brandability of that. Like, there's it transcends languages. Like, every yeah. country knows Pepe. There's funny meanings in it's different like languages in for Pepe. Like, it's, a, it's it's actually a bad word in Filipino, I recently learned. Like, it's okay. a kind of a pet word for a bad word. Uh, like, you know, it's just it's got so many funny little things attached to it. And it's been around for so long before it even became a coin that it's almost like it had this, like, huge period of brand building before it actually became a coin. So I think that's really just it. I think it's when it comes to meme coins... What you're buying into is kind of like a feel mm -hmm. and sort of just a culture. And then if everybody's on board, enough people are on board with that, you create a really great store of value where everybody can kind of have entries and exits that feel right for them. Yeah, right? It's, it's interesting, too, because nothing we're saying here is financial Absolutely advice, Absolutely not, yes. But it's easy to get caught up in FOMO and get wrecked with these two. Totally, and, and that's usually that's what the, causes them to snowball, I think. The counterpoint of it as well. It's like you start seeing something go parabolic, and naturally you're like, oh, my God, I need to get in. 
But that's usually when things are at the highest risk. So it is, I would relate it to high risk gambling for sure. And it is True. gambling. And that's been, I think that comparison has been made many times in yeah. many spaces. And it's True. Like, yeah. Be okay with it going to zero. Yeah. Because if totally. you're not, then you're, you shouldn't be investing in meme coins. Go put it in Bitcoin or Ethereum or not. Plus or there's, there's, un, yeah, there's a, I guess I should say unrealized gains you can think about that are beyond money when it comes to these things, because even let's, let's put it, let's put this situation into the mm. mix. Let's just say if all, let, let's say if anything happens, all this does is get everybody excited and start a bull run and then it goes to zero. Even if it just does that, just culturally, we all need that, right? Yeah. So like just if it has the chance to create a movement and a stir in the market and start charging things up, like that seems like a really good place for meme coins. That's that seems, you know, yes. it, it's a good way of indicating Okay, how much does the world really want to, you know, store up and get started here? Like, are we ready to get... That's a good point, because when you think, when I think about, like, bear versus bull run, <clears throat> back when we were back in the uh, the bull run, a lot of people were making money. Right? Of course, yeah. And you didn't have to be an experienced day trader. You could just flip some NFTs or get into a couple new new projects. But then when the bear market came, inherently, it's like, okay, it's more difficult for the average person to make money, unless you, you understand shorts and longs and mm -hmm. derivatives and like all kinds of other stuff, you know, and you're an actual day trader, because actually a lot of traders make good money in downturns, mm -hmm. if they know what they're doing. The average person doesn't. The average person is just like everyone else. Oh, I just lost my money. Now I need to sit and wait. Meme coins is bringing that life, kind of that opportunity and showing people here, actually, there's a lot of people making money again. There's this breath kind of like you said, this activity yeah. in the ecosystem. And the thing I like about it with meme coins specifically is that there's there's no um, there's no like classist stuff there. Yes. It's like you can be Mr. Guy with a ten dollar mini bag, or you can be a baby whale that's got ten grand sitting around, or maybe you're a VC guy. But if it's all if everybody's still putting their energy in that same place with that same equation, they all get it's just an exponentiated version of whatever you put in. And mm -hmm. as long as you're all right with that total then that's really the way to go. And that's 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 the thing that people need to be... Like, it's a good thing for, like, onboarding new people, but yeah. only <clears throat> with the caveat that they know this is your equivalent of your 10% kind of risky bucket play. Yeah. Don't do this as your, like... Don't get your life savings in here. This is something that... Yes. If you're just wanting to know how to open a wallet, oh, get a coin, and then I don't want to touch it anymore. That's too complex for me. Meme coins are for you because that's all you got to do. And then you just have to monitor the culture and pick your exit point, pick your risk level... And then, you know, go from there and do the regular financial investment stuff. Right? Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because when you look back at the bull run, I mean, there was, like, the Samo coin. It was a meme yeah. coin on Solana that, like, there was a couple of people I knew put in 1000 bucks, made $100,000. Yeah, there was a baby doge. Was a baby like, doge. I, didn't, I didn't even see that start, let alone when it crested or ended. I just there's, saw it appear one day. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's, <laughs> so there's a lot of them. And it's interesting because what, I'm, what we're kind of seeing now in the market is with the success of Pepe, all of a sudden, all these other meme coins are starting to get attention now, and everyone's kind of racing to find the next new thing to get in early. Yeah. And, and it was interesting because when we seen, <clears throat> I think it was just a day or two ago, there there was like a bit of a sell-off, a capitulation. Things went down like 4 or 5% kind of on average. Of course, yeah. You know, blood in the streets. But Pepe was skyrocketing, and a lot of meme coins were going up, and it almost made me wonder... Was the liquidity just shifting? Like maybe it wasn't even a ton of sellers. I'm sure there was a combination of it. Yeah. But it felt like a lot of the liquidity was just moving to meme coins. It wasn't necessarily that there was more new people. No, I agree. Yeah. I just think that it, I think that that's the indicator that's happening right now is that there's a chance for everybody to kind of catch up on using these meme coins and mm -hmm. trying to understand. And also these meme coins currently... They're not doing your regular explosion and drop as much. I'm seeing a lot more, especially with these newer ones, and Pepe included as well as other ones, where they're having like echelon period of huge explosion, like whatever, 40x. Mm -hmm. And then you're having like huge price action, staying sideways, kind of coiling up like a spring, and then big explosion or a big drop from there. Where it's sometimes like two to three week long ramps here, which usually doesn't happen in meme coins. Usually it's just... You know, within like a week, it's a flash fire. And it's yeah. just like you made money or you didn't. And there you go. And then we move on to the next thing. So it's And learning to time the market when to sell is, is the biggest challenge. Yeah, for say. sure. Because it's like, well, okay, I'm up. You know, so pick your pick your strategy maybe beforehand or have a plan of attack, I think really helps so that you don't have your emotions kind of getting involved. Because when things keep going up, it's easy to be like, oh, I'm just going to stay in here forever. And well, that's just like gambling, right? Set your limit, stay within it. That's why they say that stuff. Like it's the same thing when you think about your gains. When you put something in, you go, 
how much am I like, when is the level where I'm like, I know I need to pull this out and then I'll feel like I can sleep at night. Do that at that point And only at that point. And same thing with your drill losses. Like how much am I willing to lose before I'm like, okay, I'm finally mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm done with this and I want to at least get something out of it and set those limits and then just stay within that and do not falter from it. And if you're finding that you are, then you probably are too emotionally invested in what you put in the yes. first place. Right. <laughs> and I think that's what I like about meme coins is that like, you can get your grandma to open a wallet and put 20 bucks into it and you can explain to her this and then, you know, either way that that goes, she's now understanding of this. So if she yeah. only put 20 bucks and she's like, ah, I lost my 20 bucks, that's fine. It can do a next ticket. Right, exactly. Like you, you, anytime you have a new opportunity now and they at least have been fronted on the technology, what I'm, what I'm saying, I guess, is that this is an opportunity for a lot of people who are OGs in the space, who know this stuff, to present it to people who may be trying to entry point in an affordable way that it's not as risky for them, right? It's more familiar to probably what those people coming in are are used to hearing. It's risky. Yeah, just like traditional stock advice. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's these meme coins or these shit coins that people are making money off of. You could lose everything or you could make something. Do you want to put 20 bucks in? Do you want to put 100 bucks in? Like pick your comfort level and go. And then when you taste that, even just a bit, like let's say you get a, 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 you know, 2x yeah very just to say 2x, nice yeah. 2x but you're like wow i couldn't have gotten that in any other traditional investment especially not inside right? of 24 hours in that, right in yeah. like a short period of time and yeah. i think money talks so yeah. once people get a little taste of that even if they're new to the space it becomes addictive now and then they're they're like us then they start going down the rabbit hole they're like what's DeFi? what's bitcoin i should read the white paper what's ethereum what's sharding what's crc20 how to network and it just starts cascading you know, and that too is really, we just need to open the gates. Well, that's what right? I mean. It's like, it's a way for you to not have to be so heavily crypto educated. You just need that's to be right. as far as being able to open a MetaMask, do a swap, and then like occasionally check a CoinGecko page if you care. Yeah. Other than that, you don't even have to care. You can literally just leave it there and then ask your son to tell you when it's time to pull out. Yeah. Right. And so that's a very approachable entry point. And again, if it goes positively for them, and they are briefed on the on the on what's going to be what's what to what's to be expected. Then when they win, they yeah you're right. They're going to be like oh that felt kind of cool. I felt really like you know well, maybe what other things could I try yeah. that might be like this and you know and they might end up exploring more of the entire crypto ecosystem, mm-hmm. right? So I mean when you look at anything in crypto, all of it is designed to work, and the only thing it needs most of the time is enough user base for it to happen, yeah. for it to actually become this utopian version that's on its white paper. Yeah. That ha- that's a, with Bitcoin, that's all we need. More people to use it. Mm-hmm. Ethereum, more people to use it. Games that we're playing, we just need more players to play them, right? Yep. So <laughs> anything that you can do that's like low entry point, and I really stress that point because yeah. if that mean, that makes it accessible to everyone in every country. I mm-hmm. mean, I've heard people who invested just because they, they had 20 bucks and that was the only thing they could put for this whole year and they just heard about this early. And now they're paying for whole houses. Like I heard a guy today who had a disabled kid. He said he makes more than a hundred grand a year and he barely, he, 90% of it is gone. And he's been just getting wrecked and wrecked and rug pulled and rug pulled with, with faith and people he really thought were genuinely trying to take care of him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he just, this was his last, like, uh, this is it. And boom, he's, he's now able to buy a brand new wheelchair for, and, and fully pay for all the increased, huge medical bills. He has a special needs child. Yeah. You know, it was like I was in tears listening. I've never been in I've never been in a Twitter space, let alone stayed long, let alone like been in tears and emotionally invested in other people. Like just it's that. Hearing or not. the successes of people who deserve it, even well, and whether you, or not they deserve it, is it doesn't really matter. It's just the opportunity that's there for people. I think it's just that I never. We don't hear from the small people. When you go to these spaces, you you hear from the guy who was paid to host it. You hear from the moderators and the co-hosts that's and the point. guests that they know they like to bring up because they won't say anything that slanders the project. That's right. Here, you're having a like these spaces for these meme coins are literally their open platform for people to go like, here's my story, here's what job I work in, and from my life perspective, here's how this works for me. You know, you're having everybody from just a fry cook to a fucking billionaire Bitcoin investor in Saudi, everybody sharing their knowledge, nobody judging anybody. So I think that's the part that I like the most. Anytime I've been in a meme coin room, if it's you know if the vibe is right, that's what it is. It's all just like, where'd you enter? What's your story? Okay. What are you looking to get out of this? And like, who are you? And like, giving people a platform. Now, and another thing you brought up a good point there is um, <clears throat> that I want to mention about Pepe. Yeah. The dark side kind of meme coins is most a lot most 
are rug pulls. They are pump and dump scams. There are yeah. people that we know of, that I know of, not personally, but just through other secondhand information, who this is their business model is to create these meme shitcoin pump and dump scams. Yeah, and it happens in all pushes. other sectors too. Like it happens yeah. in profile We've picture seen it with arts. Squid Games. That one was yep. kind of the most famous, I would say, mm-hmm. a long time ago. Watching that that drop that happened. Yep. So like. It is high risk, and a lot of people do get wrecked, and that's why I kind of think you made a good point about like not overextending yourself and stuff like this. And I think about like diversification. I'd rather have a hundred bucks in ten meme coins than a thousand bucks in one, even Pepe. Yeah, even true. Pepe, which has the iconic name. There's a culture behind. Well, you it. can see saw with the gains, and like one of them will be up and down, that's right? True. And it might you know that can create like a good constant trend. And of... there's also another interesting question about long term potential of some of these, like. Will some of these just fall off and forever be forgotten? Or when we see more of this bull run happening and more liquidity come in, are we going to get that cascade effect like we've seen before where Bitcoin starts running? Like, let's say we get back to 60,000, double, right? The market cap right now for Bitcoin. Ethereum, the altcoins, everything are running. And realistically, this is going to happen by the Bitcoin halving, you know, maybe even beforehand. Are we going to see that injection in meme coins again? So maybe it is good to hold on to some right now, even if you feel like they're half dead, because who knows what's going to happen. So there's always that kind of counterpoint too. Like if you put a thousand bucks in and it's down to $50, don't sell it because you think that's dead. No. You might as well. You might as well just hodl until the off chance the community picks it all up and it resurrects two years later. Who knows? You know, look how long Dogecoin was a flat line before it became something anyone cared about. You never know. And I think that's really good investment knowledge is just if you, you know, if you get such to such a low level, never sell at a loss. That's the Warren Buffett classic. You just don't lose money. It's much better for you to run to zero and have something possibly resurrect than you just let go of the opportunity entirely. Yeah, yeah do for you really sure. need that 50 bucks. You know, and it's interesting because in play to earn, I almost think about like if, and here's a good example. There are, you know, I wouldn't call them meme coins, but there's definitely some coins being launched that are under the guise of memes, but they have a utility. But they have it. Yeah, they have. And we're seeing a lot of that with like Web3 right now with gaming, where it's like, oh, this is kind of a meme coin, but actually we're going to build a gaming platform and here's a bunch of promises that will take us five to ten years to do. See, those give me red alarms. Me too. Right? Red I alarms. I think that's the warning thing is they got this grandiose vision. You're looking at a freaking shit-ass website. For the most yeah. part, not designed properly, and I mean sometimes that's almost intentional. It's kind of the joke, like you go to the Pepe website. Yeah, it's kind of like absolutely. A joke with yeah, it, but but they're leveraging that, and that, I think that's the risk is be careful of the big promises, because those are the ones that I, I find are more risky than normal. Because why are they trying so hard to sell it? Well, let me put it this way: I know that the person who created the Pepe coin has only six percent of it, so. That immediately gives me a lot of confidence because your usual model is that the team Mm -hmm. has a certain huge percentage to pay them. And also there's a certain expected return to all their VC backers. Whereas this, there was grassroots. There's no team. There's no anyone at the top who could be collecting it. Even the guy who owns it and made it, even if he just made off, there's still 94% of the token fluctuation for everybody else to interact with. Mm -hmm. That was, I I literally feel safer knowing there's no team and nobody and no major share or pie slice or roadmap or anything. than most of these roadmaps I see, because we've vetted so many games where it's like your roadmap is like a year old. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know, you haven't responded to any tickets. You, you know, the, it's just a a ghost town of when AMA, you know, like how many times have you been in that? Mm -hmm. And it's because, yeah, it's that model, you know, not every one of them are like that. We've played with plenty of projects that are just, they're like your average game studio that just wants to work hard and make a good game. And they happen to like web three. Those exist. And that makes me think about what about that? What if we could kind of get a merger of that model in web three gaming where, the game development company, maybe they've got their revenue source figured out in different ways, but the token that they launch in the game, they do that. They say, look, we don't own any. You guys do. This is a purely player-fueled token. Yes, yeah. That's Community-driven d- community entirely. Driven yeah. Entirely. I bet you a lot of people would jump onto that type of platform, regardless of what genre it is, just to kind of get the experience to see what it's like. And, yeah. And that would bring a lot of power and confidence back into these projects. Now the question becomes how... When you have a board of directors and when you have a company, you're you're not going to go a new route that gives up opportunity or gives up money. And I think that's the difficulty we're seeing with like 
centralization versus decentralization. There's really yes. DAOs are not DAOs. They're makeshift versions tout it as DAOs because they're still a centralized team. Yeah, and they're just giving the it votes. another name, right? It's the yeah. same thing as your average board, board of stock trustees or whatever. The people you need to impress are still in there. They're just named something different now. That's right. And all the terminology is different, but the what the, the grand idea is still goes sucks up to the top. Yeah, so and, I think about what if we had that kind of model with play to earn and what that could potentially... I mean, there'd have to be other structures in place to make sure the development team gets revenue from other sources, maybe through ad generation or whatever. Yeah, but I agree with you. really confident. Yeah, where, definitely where you feel like you own X percent of the... Re, like you really own mm -hmm. the game itself or a percentage of it, almost like a stock percentage. Yeah, like, you know, you feel like you own a bit of Apple when you buy an Apple stock. You can consider yourself... I own some of Apple, right? Some people yes. use that terminology going, I, I own that, even though they don't. And it's I, something I want to mention too, like, you know, I've been in uh, meme coins for a while and, yeah. and even back before and even during the bear run, I bought some and yeah, I've made money, I've lost money. But I think the, the funnest thing to me actually is watching the community. Like I remember SHIB has a telegram, which is just absurd. Yeah. But it, it's really, it was really fun watching it when SHIB was rising all the, like nonstop meme posts, nonstop to the moon, nonstop Elon pictures. And it was just kind of like fun to just watch it for 10 minutes and eat some popcorn and see the and I think that's what's that the greatness about meme coins. And the same thing happens with Pepe. Mm -hmm. People are just having fun making songs, making memes, making dumb stuff, and just like blurting all of this out to people until finally your uncle or your grandma goes like, okay, I give what's with all the dogs and frogs, yeah. right? <laughs> That's what we want. It's, it's nice because memes are a thing that people can recognize enough and see enough and actually resonate enough to ask a question that may lead them to getting into crypto. And that's what I think is the cool mm -hmm. thing there is because that's all you need most of the time when you're trying to like, – anybody who's ever – I'm sure you've all had this experience where you try to talk to one of your family members and explain crypto to them. You know, and it just kind of glazes over. You know, this is one of those things that can kind of make it a little bit more. It's interesting because I didn't think about it as a bridge for adoption so much. And I think you're right. It could be just a fun, simple, risky gamble. Like, well, just think about it. If you put five dollars in, and that gives you two weeks straight of hanging out with people, laughing your butt off, having such a fun time on Twitter, and just going nuts with a bunch of people, and maybe coming out with lifelong friends out of it, even if it was just a two week frenzy. I know people who met because of the Doge or Shib craze, oh, yeah. and they now have permanent online DGen friends from that. Yeah, or businesses. And that's happening with me right now. I'm connecting with AI artists and musicians and people who are like, hey, you're an artist, you're a streamer. Like, we're collaborating just to foster the culture and keep having fun. And that's what I like about it is it can be a very casual thing. If, you, if you've invested correctly and it's money you're not emotionally into, it becomes so much fun because you're just like – I don't care what happens. I just didn't, I'm just going to enjoy this for as long as it lasts <laughs> and make some friends and enjoy it along the way and maybe make some money too. Yeah. Right? Awesome. Well, I think we'll end it there. That's a good kind of summary of, uh, you know, what's going on right now with Pepe and thanks for sharing your experiences with it. Yes, definitely. You know, like it's kind of right next to play to earn. Like, like I've talked about before where you've got like Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, you know, shit. You're totally coins, right. It's, it's, it's a, the it's volatility a, it's, is it's a trickle down effect and I, Here's what I dream. Here's what I said, okay. I'll end off with is that sure. I want this meme coin run. I don't care which one starts it or if all three of them or all of them push this. I want this meme coin run to give so many people so many big W's that they now have a lot more Ethereum and things to invest in the ecosystem so that we can – like I want it to go meme coins help push up ETH. ETH helps push up everybody getting gains to put into Bitcoin and then it goes right back down from the Bitcoin having and goes and cascades back down because everyone <laughs> has then everybody's got even more money and they're ready to put it back into more Ethereum plays, more meme coin plays, more game and well, it'll all trickle down. Plus we've got the banking crisis and the US dollar deorganization happening that's going to help fuel more money. Agrees. So like I said, if out of everything that we get here during this current like meme coin summer that we're having, if we just have two months of everybody spending and trading a lot of money and just get things charged up. Mm -hmm. And that's all it does is get the engine started. If so all it is, is that lawnmower pull, that's already a win. Yeah. We're all going to win at the end from that cascade effect, helping pump all of our other sectors of our portfolios. Good point. So. Thanks so much for joining us today. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It really helps us out. And until next time, cheers. cheers.